U.S. stocks are set to open lower on Friday after a string of disappointing earnings reports by some of the world's largest companies. The biggest surprise was retail giant Amazon, which said it lost $3.8 billion in the three months to March. That's its first quarterly loss in seven years. Apple said sales rose 9% in the same period, but the iPhone maker is warning investors that earnings may take a dive in the coming months. Both companies saw a reversal in fortunes from the height of the pandemic when lockdowns drove up demand for gadgets and online shopping. That slump is tied to supply chain constraints, which also led to a dip in revenue for chipmaker Intel. Now for more on the story, let's go to Danny Yusen. She's a financial analyst at AJ Bell in Huddersfield in the UK. Welcome back to the program, Danny. Now, we've had these supply chain problems for several months now. Why haven't things improved? What are these companies saying? Well, it's interesting because, of course, this time last year, we were also hearing from these companies warning of supply chain issues potentially impacting availability of some of their kit, which we did indeed see over Christmas time. A lot of those gadgets that we might have wanted to buy just simply weren't on the shelves. Now, what's happened since, because we were expecting the situation to improve, obviously, as countries got back on their feet after COVID lockdowns, well, of course, then we have had the war in Ukraine, which has impacted the availability of certain commodities. And we've also seen China more lockdowns because of their zero COVID policy. This has all basically exacerbated a situation which was already tricky. You know, even going into the pandemic, the number of chips being required was just soaring to all term highs. And effectively, those chip makers just couldn't keep up with demand. So this is just something which has been in, in the cards, in the offing. But it's something which is having particular impact right now. And as you say, Apple is talking about somewhere between four and eight billion pounds in lost sales because of it. Right. So a lot of this is on the supply side, but can we look at these numbers and see if there's anything we can gleam in terms of the purchasing power of consumers in the U.S. and beyond? Yeah, it was really interesting because uh, yesterday we had latest growth figures from the United States, which came in with a shock contraction. People expected that the U.S. economy was going to grow. It didn't. Now, looking behind those figures, it wasn't consumer spend that was primarily at play here. It was basically an offset between the amount of stuff that the United States was sending abroad compared with the amount that it was importing. However, we do know that certainly consumers are thinking hard about what they spend their money on. And Intel did warn that things like gadgets would be one of the last things on many people's mind if they were worried about you know, where they were going to find the money just to pay for things like gas and food. So, yeah, people are changing their habits. Amazon certainly uh, are finding that, you know, people don't necessarily need to shop online so much anymore. Maybe they don't want to pay the cost of getting things delivered. And so people now have options to spend their money elsewhere, not just on stuff. And, of course, you know, people's home offices have now been kitted out. So we don't need to add to them. All right. We do have more on those U.S. GDP numbers just up ahead. Danny Yusen, thank you for joining us out of the U.K.